woke up this morning sad, but yet I kept feeling celebrate, celebrate. Don't know exactly any real reason why I should. If I were to look at it in the old ways, like how I'd been feeling, judgments that were always taught me about everything being in the proper place and living up to certain standards, doing things certain ways. Well, it's wild and woolly here, and I've got plenty to do. But that's looking at the negative side. The positive side is I can clean up this mess. I can have my place of rest and contemplation cleared up and put back. Get rid of these weeds. Move stuff around. Hopefully prepare for next year. Plant new seeds and put beautiful things where emptiness and barrenness had once been. My place for sitting in the sun and relaxing when it's hot. To contemplate. To fix the garden area. Buffalo do not tiptoe through tomatoes. So everything has to go in mineral tubs or be fenced off. I do minimal now. Because even when I try to do that, they still find a way. But yeah, I've got brush to cut. Raise the canopy so I get more air next year. Garbage to pick up from the years of hopelessness and emptiness. Even though someone was here for the last 22 years of his life, he didn't care if the house fell down around my ears. And it damn near did. And I got hopeless and helpless and just gave up. Didn't give a shit. And you can see the mess. I used to be ashamed of it. I didn't want to let anybody come up. I didn't want to let anybody on this hill. Thankfully, the, the driveway helps with that. I brought the skids home and I intend to tear them apart. I want to make end tables with epoxy. I have ideas, but I never had the energy. The dryer is there to hold the tools from rain. I got my little burn pile here once I clean all the garbage out of it. Get rid of them concrete chunks that got wet. Try to get something going. The tank, its belly went out of it a long, long time ago. I had hopes and dreams of somebody coming and cutting it in half and taking it on the south side of the house, putting a liner in it and putting aquatic plants and goldfish in it underneath the overhang of the house a little ways out as a fire barrier. We almost got burned up a couple times here from people careless with fires from down on the road or camping. But you can see how the apathy, the depression, the broken heart, the disappointment. Why am I doing this today? Why am I showing you all my filth and mess? Well, several fold. Everybody's doing their doom and gloom, revelation, rapture. Well, yes, I've been condemning myself. I've been judging myself, and I've been living like trash. But I'm not really truly trash. I've always seen myself as ugly. Never wanted to see a picture of me. And you know, the weird part is, is I've taken more pictures of myself in the last three years than have ever been taken of me in the last 63. 62, I should say, excuse me. Not quite 63 yet. There's only a handful of pictures of me before I married Roy in 1993. Even childhood pictures, there's only one or two of me as a baby. A couple as a teenager. Very few. Yeah, there's a mess here. There's filth. There's a lot of abandonment. We lived in that camper for a couple winters. And once we got the house built, I'd build the walls for both the garage and the house. And he'd come home, we'd stand them up. I'd build another wall, he'd come home, we'd stand them up. The 
first four years in, we worked good together. And there was hope and there was potential. When he hit 50, he gave up on life. He never wanted me, and I knew that. But we figured we were the only ones that could tolerate each other. And I wanted out of town. I fell and fractured both hips. And then I turned around and fell and fractured my collarbone. So rough in and construction was out. I almost lost my place. I had six more payments to go. They weren't much. But he helped me to receive what I needed. And we came here. I got the buffalo to anchor me here. After the first seven years of his anger and hate, he didn't want to be here, but he wouldn't take his money and leave. We paid as we went, cash in hand, surplus and scrap lumbers, salvage, even digging out of the trash dump, as well as auctions to build our kingdom of trash. But I had hope and I had always believed that time and love could heal all wounds. It took me 30 years to finally accept that that does not happen unless somebody is willing or wanting and willing to let go of their hurts to walk through them, to move beyond them. The last three years, it took me the first year to recover. And the second year, well, the first year I scrambled trying to pay bills and to keep these guys fed. I'm down to four now, and these four are now costing me what it cost me to feed the 12. I hold on to them. The love is not the same. Parts of me have died. I want to love them. And George, in his teenage years, doesn't really always want to be petted. But on occasion, when he knows I need it, he'll let me have a little bit of love. When he knows inside that I love him. And I remember the little kisses he gave me as a baby. That's how he got his name. Old Georgie Porgy Pudding Pie kissed the girl and made her cry. I thought he was always going to peel the side of my face off when he gave me kisses. I want to love him. But I try not to be too attached because anything I get attached to real deep and emotionally, something bad always happens to them. And they're always the first ones to get hurt. Yeah. And again, you ask, what the hell does this matter to me? Well, it don't, really. But the first year was scrambling. After 27 years of sitting at home and not working because he wasn't going to have any woman. Being away from home, you're supposed to stay home. You're supposed to serve me and do only for me. Not do anything else. Not for yourself. Well, the Buffies were my anchor to keep me here. I was so mad and angry I was ready to leave. But I'd been homeless so many other times before because I'd always walk away from bad relationships, bad jobs. You can't keep a place if you don't got money coming in. I'd been homeless so many different times. And anger and rage was always a thing in me. And I'd crash vehicles. Get out in the middle of nowhere, out in the country, and just drive. Or get out on an old abandoned highway and fly till I either blew the motor or crashed most times. I'm lucky to have survived, some say. The anger and the rage and the fury from all the physical abuse, mental abuse, and emotional abuse in the house. You can tell by all the animals, even though they're not in the greatest of health, or the greatest environment for them. But they are my world. They're what keeps the good and the love alive in me. And the hope alive. But even though it's become dry, even though it's become a disaster, there is good in me. There is a desire to love and a desire to clean things up and set things right. Well, between all of his anger and hate and taking care of him the last 10 years of his life, when he wouldn't get up from the table, wouldn't do anything, he was beyond Archie Bunker on steroids. I can't even think of how to describe him. But I knew my place was here. 
I had seen it when I was a child, that I, he was the little boy standing beside me. And I was to help him to find the light and to find his way home. Thus I did. I've served my purpose. And I shattered my heart, my spirit, my soul. But my soul's not damaged, not truly. It's still alive. There's still hope, there's still love. And there's been a lot of things going on that there's a big to-do today with revelations and the separation tonight. But you know, the energies have been weird for a while. A few days ago, there was energies of transmutation, transformation, and truth. Everybody's afraid of the revelation. And it's like, guys... It doesn't mean the end of the physical world or the physical earth. It's not the end of your body. It's not the end of our existence here on earth. What it is, is the end of our being stuck in the old patterns, the old paradigms, the old beliefs, if that's what we choose. We can rise above. Heaven being the mind, and we can be lifted up in spirit, lifted up in intelligence, lifted up in our way of seeing things. But things are revealed and we see life in a different way. Hi, George. Thank you, buddy. I needed that. I needed that. Thank you, buddy. I know you want your breakfast. You want me to shut up. Thank you. Thank you, honey. I needed this. I needed this. Thank you. I'll get your breakfast now. I'll get your breakfast. Set this someplace, but I know the cats will mess it up. <laughs> but after my adrenals shut down, and I spent a year just trying to get up out of bed to take care of my babies, it was all I could do to come out and feed them. Give them their corn, then I'd have to go back in or lay down on the ground out here till I got the energy again to go pitch their hay. Sometimes I'd put a bale over there, but they seem to be spoiled and prefer to have it given to them. And that's okay. I don't blame them. Sometimes I wish there was someone here to provide for what I needed in spirit and soul and heart and mind. But, but I know that'll never be, and I'm okay with that. It's not supposed to be. I'm better off alone. And finding my own way back home. But then I'm not distracted by other things. It's time to come and be my truth. To be my happiness. To be myself. To find my way home. To let the junk in my DNA be revealed that it's not really junk that it's the God self with the 10565 Yahe Vahe the God self is alive and well within me but the truth is within me and the buffalo medicine is right thinking right action right being Ooh, sorry about that It's time to be my truth. To make whatever repairs need to be made. Yes, it's fall. It's time for the season for the harvest. Well, the harvest of this year has been recovering the adrenals and reconnecting the brain, overcoming the depression and what it does to the brain and the neurochemicals and finding whatever supplements I needed were self-talk. And the stubborn part of me was stronger than I realized. And I've had a real battle with my shadow self, my ego self, and everything that was embedded in me as a child. But I'm overcoming. I'm climbing out of that hole, and I've actually left the hole, I believe. 
dusting myself off and preparing to move forward. Winter will be a time of reflection for many. And by revelation and everybody putting today as a deadline, and it's really going to happen this time, according to all the headlines, many posts, it's not the end of the world. It's the end of the world as we knew it. I'm not planning on going back in that hole. I'm not planning on going back to all those hurtful things. And I'm not carrying them forward with me. It took me forever to get away from them, to get out of that hole, and I'll be damned if I go back. It took me 30 years of paying hell to be here. And I'm not going to spend the next 30 years with the mess that was created by my emotions, by my heartache, by my heartbreak, by my loneliness, by my need to be loved by others, by my need to be of value to others. You know, here recently, I've had a good friend, kind of like a sister I never had, kind of judging me or saying, making comments, and they're true, they're true. But I'm like, I wasn't complaining. You asked and I answered. But yet what you're saying to me, you do yourself. And you're stressed out by it. You're unhappy by it. And it's okay for you, but yet it's not right for me. A little bit of hypocrisy there, but okay. And before I was a little triggered, it was okay for her family members to be like I was, but yet there was helpful advice and remindings of how I wasn't... Well, I don't know how to explain it. But it was okay for them and perfectly acceptable, but yet it's not right when I'm doing it. So it's like, okay, pot calling kettle black. Okay, well, that's fine. We'll move on. Well, Revelation is about shedding away the things that bring disharmony, unhappiness, the discomfort, and that which makes us hurt either emotionally, mentally, intellectually, psychologically, physically. Our body holds the chemicals from our emotions and the electrical charges from the heart. The longer they continue, the more they alter the natural blueprint and natural design. Yes, your skin and flesh and nails all repla and hair replace themselves every seven days, every cell. But they're not according to divine design if you're still holding certain thoughts, vibrations, frequencies, or emotions out of alignment. One thing triggers another. If you ever taken an old car, try to work on it, you fix one thing, and something else falls apart, falls apart, and you finally just say, hell with it, I give up. You know, that's how many people become either hoarders or just drunks, or they give up on life. Or like Roy, he wasn't a drunk, he just sat there at the kitchen table and bitched and belly ached and bellered all the time, but wouldn't do a damn thing to help himself. And he made it miserable for him. He suffered the hard way. He wouldn't listen to the doctors. He wouldn't follow their advice. I pushed and pulled and dragged and carried him and tried to drown him. That killed us both. But he refused to the very, very end. The last Saturday before he died, six days before he died, He opened up, and I saw the blocks coming down, and I seen the light and little children behind him with a shallow stream, all playing and laughing and having fun, and there was so much love. And as I felt this, and he looked at me with tears in his eyes, which I had never, ever seen. He'd never even told anybody other than 30 years ago, his littlest grandson, his first grandson, I love you. The only person in my life I ever heard him say that to. The only emotion I ever seen or heard from him. I never felt any other than anger. But I felt love all around him. And within me for him and pouring to him. And he said, I finally understand what you've been trying to tell me all this time. I finally understand you were right. When his daughter was dying, she said, I love you, Daddy. I love you, Daddy. 
even though they hadn't spoken, there had been disagreements with them for years. They were like two peas in a pod. Even her sister always said that. He wouldn't say a word. I could hear her across the house. It's only 30 foot wide. But I could hear her. And she needed to hear that. I was forbidden from his family. That was... Essential oils were forbidden. Music was forbidden. Touch was forbidden. And his family was forbidden. I agreed to it. But I made a promise to God. And I'd made a promise to God before a man of the cloth when I married him. But I knew since I was 12 years old I was supposed to help this little boy. And I was standing by a lighthouse on a bluff overlooking the ocean. That dream was repeated over and over and over and over. I seen it in him. I seen it in his first grandson. I've seen it in two of his nephews as well as his son. I was supposed to be here, otherwise I'd have walked when I went to see my brother. And I got the buffaloes as an anchor to remind me to be of right thinking, right action, right being in service to others. And as I was obligated to them for their well-being, they gave me comfort and love and strength to do what I needed to do. Here you go, George. And you everybody saying, sell the place, move away, start over. I mean, come on, people. Where else can I live on 23 acres and have this much privacy? Not here, neighbors. Yeah, there's a neighbor back there, a little less than, maybe a mile, back there in a dead-end road in a valley. And there's a place where the guys go on the weekends. They call it the office. Uh, two and three-quarter miles to the highway over there, there's two houses on the north right by the highway and one on the south side on the highway and one across the highway. Down along there is all flood land. You got Sugar Creek. And there's a house over there. A couple, it, I mean, it's like a little tiny spot when you look when the leaves fall. We've got three neighbors over here within the next two miles. And there's a big hill, a house built up on the top. They rarely ever show up. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six places in the next five miles. But not any of them closer than a mile to me. You go up this way on the weekends, you can hear the people that bought the place. They got dirt bikes. But other than that... Ain't nobody else going to be building here. There's no water, so unless you put a well, most of it's hill or flood ground. Isn't nobody else going to be building here? And where else can I live with this much privacy? I can walk out here in my all-togethers in my birthday suit, and nobody's eyes are going to bleed. I can do what I want. If I want it to look like a pig pen, it can look like a pig pen, and I don't have to have shame or guilt anymore. Because I know the energy is finally coming to me. And the temperatures are cooperating. The weather's cooperating. And I'm going to start cleaning this mess up. And I'm glad for it. I'm happy. It's the first time I felt this happy and positive since I got here. And the house was completed. Once the house is completed and he realized how much work it was going to be, how hard it was going to be, he gave up. And I've been dragging him with me ever since. Dragging the emotions, blaming myself, beating myself up, weighing myself down. The obesity. I wasn't this big when we first got married. When I had hope. But when he started turning cranky and I was hiding from the hurt, I used food. 